Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I'm going to continue with my Venus and Mars missions. This is the Venus mission. For some reason, I thought that I had brought it uh, past its moon encounter. Uh, it passes by the moon. Uh, it did some science and then proceeded out to interplanetary space. But it seems like we have not done the moon encounter here. So something wrong happened with saving that persistent file. So let us proceed. Well, let me make sure everything is all right with it. It's still sort of spinning around and around. Uh, the antenna is targeting Earth. Very good. We have a backup antenna, but we won't need it for Venus, I don't think. Um, obviously, uh, RCS is not doing anything right now. I don't see a particular need to make it do something that could ruin our encounter, so I'll just let it continue spinning as it is. And yeah, let's just do the science since we get over there. Uh, well, actually, we might have to keep it oriented just so that it can recharge, right? Uh, where is the sun? Okay, let's see how that might have changed things. Well, it's recharging, so that's okay. Especially since uh, in time warp it'll recharge more. Uh, well, we have a Venus periapsis. It is growing, so let me just time warp so that it stops growing because of extra RCS fire. And we will proceed to the moon. So yeah, after the Venus and Mars missions, depending on how they turn out, I will be doing some other mission. It shouldn't take too long to get these things to their target locations. Uh, especially since I don't think we'll be able to make orbit around either one. So that'll be a downside to this whole thing. But at least we'll fulfill the flyby missions. Okay, we have our moon encounter. And we had that one contract that asked for science data from space around the moon, right? And we were going to lunar flyby below 5,000, and we are going to be below 5,000, and we are supposed to collect science. Within the flyby location, visual observations, oh, time delay. Okay, um, yep, high over the moon, transmit. Alright, mission fulfilled, and we move on. Okay, we are out of lunar sphere of influence, and now exiting Earth's sphere of influence. And our approach to Venus is 1,600 kilometers, which is well within the requirements for a flyby. We are focusing on the Venus mission first. They'll arrive at Venus before we have to do anything with the Mars mission. Yeah, so the Mars mission arrives at Mars in 323 days. It took a long way around, not quite a home and transfer. This one will take 114 days to get to Venus periapsis. I don't see any reason to change anything about it right now. It's solar panels... Ah, okay, we, we could turn a little bit to face the sun. And what does that do to our approach? Well, it's going up. Proceeding on. Okay, we're about halfway there. Let me see about the solar panels again. Yeah, not the best position. So let's turn. Check our periapsis. That's about the same as it was. Well, we've got a three minute delay, it looks like. So I'm going to have to time warp through a lot of stuff. All right, here we are at Venus. <laughs> First attempt at Venus, and here we are. A flyby only, of course, but still, it's a thing. Um, let's see if we could get into orbit. I don't know. Venus has this uh, significant gravity, so that could help us. Looks like to get into orbit, it'll take 2,000. Yeah, it'll take 2,000. Um, as loose an orbit as we can do. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll take at least 1,700 given our current approach. There might be some approach to Venus that would take less, but right now, in order to slow down, we need 1,700. So this is not going to make it. Uh, it's possible that we could slingshot it and do something else hold on how does it end up after the Venus encounter it ends up in this uh, rather high orbit actually 
you can see it definitely gets pushed out by Venus. Now if we like get closer to Venus, how does that work out? Not much because we're sort of going in a polar direction. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't help at all. Okay, so this is the best we can do. We get a little bit of boost. We actually get past Earth's orbit. We end up, uh, I don't know what kind of cycle that is. If we had a longer time to apoapsis, where we could potentially cycle, I mean, if uh, we could hit Earth in sort of a cycle, eh. I mean, if we had an orbit that was one year around, I mean, but that would require us uh, calibrating it so it had hit Earth at some point first. Right now, there's no indication that it hits Earth at all, especially with this inclination. So, anyway, that's that's too finicky for right now. All right, so uh, observations, and what other signs did we have here? Oh, we can also do analyze telemetry. I'm surprised I didn't put at least a thermometer on, but I guess that's because of the Mars mission. Well, I don't know why. Why not? Oh, there it is. I forget. Uh, it was Ven stock revamp retextures them, and I didn't notice them. I was looking for the normal one. Oh, I can't actually click on it. Okay, there we go. Orbital perturbation data, yes. Telemetry analysis, however, Venus. Transmitting. Strange I didn't put the other instruments on, though. Since they don't cost that much. And there is the gravity scan in space high over Venus's midlands. Well, trouble with Venus is it's tough to tell where it doesn't have midlands. Um, I mean, yeah, you could use the MacGyver biome thing. Actually, this readout doesn't have the biome. Landing? Surface biome, yeah. I guess we'll take a peek at that. All right, let's proceed. But of course, we would have to hit the biome three minutes ahead of time, which is an interesting task. Selecting parts on this thing for some reason is tough. I mean, that one is easy. And then this one, see if I hover over it, okay, there. But you see, uh, I can hover over that, that's fine. And right click, but this tank and then the orbital perturbation experiment. Uh, I should go back to VAB to check what action group it is, but it is sort of a weird thing. I've probably action grouped the orbital perturbation experiment, but well, I don't know what custom 2 does. We'll see whether it's the experiment or not. It is, but we ended up over the Midlands. Okay, so action group 2 is the right one, but uh, we didn't we did not catch the highlands in time and there it is we have performed the Venus flyby let's try the experiment again lowlands it says down there and this is probably not close to Venus yet but we'll get high over the lowlands there we go I don't know if we'll actually be low over Venus at uh, 2,000 kilometers that would be low when it comes to Earth, because for Earth it's uh, 35,000 kilometers that you need to get high over the Earth. But this is Venus. We still have communication. That's really nice. Okay, uh, just above Venus is lowland, so it is, it is low. Okay. And also gravity scan. Actually, I think the telemetry is also biome based. Should have done that. I mean, uh, should have done that in the previous place. Looks like we did get science. Yes, we have gotten our science. We fulfilled the contract. Um, I'm just gonna leave this be. Uh, we can't have it unless some fuel is locked. Hold on, let me check. No, uh, the fuel is all unlocked, so we're reading our total delta V, a thousand. That's all we've got here. And that's not enough to make orbit around Venus. So, we are going to leave this be, and we are going to turn to our Mars mission. But let's rename this. This will be Venus 1. 
All right, here we are with the Mars mission, and this is a little bit tricky because it's clearly facing the sun with its solar panels, but it's not getting as much electric charge as I'd like. Um, during time warp, it replenishes properly, as you can see, uh, inflow of 35 units of electric charge, uh, 0.35 units of electric charge per second. But uh, we'll see how that holds up. It's still a long way to Mars. If we zoom out here. Actually, uh, we're, we're touching Mars's orbit right now. We actually have to go past Mars's orbit in order to hit it because I guess we were trying to hit it at one of the nodes uh, to uh, save us from too much of an inclination change or something like that. Anyway, so we're actually going a little bit past. We'll see how the electric charge holds up while we're doing that. Let me close that. We'll probably keep the landing window open so that I can see the surface biome. Okay, uh, better fix its orientation. Oh, no connection. Uh-oh. Mm. Ah, well, Earth is all the way out there. This could be a problem. Okay, well, Mars might not work out. Let's see. I mean, I don't know if the flyby... Well, it requires us to do science there, so obviously we'll need power. We are losing... If there's any sign of a connection, I'll take advantage of it, but... Not before our electric charge runs out. But... Our RCS is... Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our RCS is on. So I can still control the RCS. Uh, someday, Remote Tech will fix this. But until that day arrives, I will save myself. We'll pretend that this was, uh, at, we'll pretend that it was programmed to track the bloody sun in the first place, which it probably ought to be. Is that fair? I think it's fair. I think uh, it should have a sun tracking program installed in there. That's all it needs. I, I mean, I, I don't need to adjust anything else about it. The Mars periapsis is all right. There was no mid-course adjustment. That, I mean, we did the mid-course adjustment. So... Yeah, it just needed some sort of sun tracking program involved, and it would, it would have been fine. So I'm going to claim that that's legit. Let's just move on. We do not have connection, though. And if we stay not having connection, we can't transmit the science. Well, we can't tell it to get the science is sort of more important. Transmitting the science can be done later on. But we actually have to... So one of these antennae is not enough. This high gain antenna. We needed both of them on. But that would take more electric charge. So that's why that is not how it is. We will have done a Mars flyby. But without science we're not going to get credit for it. Yep, I don't see how anything can help at this point. Well, wait, it says log visual observations. Let me... No connection to send command on. All right. Well, yep. Passing by Mars. Maybe we should have done it. Uh, I wonder if doing a experiment in interplanetary space would have worked. Would it have checked whether the experiment was actually done in Mars SOI? Anyway, we have definitely done the flyby part, but it says experiment any. So could we wait until, well, I don't know, eventually, yeah, could we wait until we're in interplanetary space, do some experiment once we get regain connection, and would that work out? Unfortunately, we'll have to time warp to that, and, you know, that limits the amount of time we can do other things. Um, let's see, though. Oh, it's... hold on. Sun tracking. Oh, we have connection. Okay, we have connection. Let's log visual observations and see what happens. And, well, why don't we just do uh, analyze telemetry and uh, gravity. Okay, let's time warp through the signal delay. I mean, it's... I mean, we're, we're not too far off from Mars. It was just a little bit. Come on, contract. It's good, right? That'll be good. 
No, uh, it says destination Mars, so it probably won't work. Yeah, it didn't buy it. Uh, it can only be science from Mars. All right, well, I tried. Can we get this to cycle again is an interesting question. Can we get it to hit Mars a second time? Well, I could get another Mars encounter for 938. Uh, we don't have 938, obviously. Well, so I guess that's that. Um, that's a lot of finagling for you. Interesting how that works. We delay out and then we come back in and hit it again. Okay, well, pipe dream. Uh, let's see, how long do we have until the Mars flyby contract is uh, over with 725 days? And when is the next encounter? What was the next transfer possibility? Uh, that's why I changed transfer window. Something weird has happened. Um, 221 days. All right, well, we'll add that alarm. Uh, we will have staged combustion, so that should give us a lot of new engines. And now we have a lot of extra science to deploy. Let's uh, go back to the Space Center and see what we can do. So here we are in R&D and second gen capsules. Uh, anything pressing? Well, Gemini cabin would be nice for like Kerbal Rescue missions. Uh, obviously, that would be important. Wow, look at that electric charge draw. Two kilowatts. Wow. That's pretty, pretty hefty. You'll need some serious solar panels for that. Um, which Gemini didn't have, but uh, I guess fuel cells, are they going to give us fuel cells or or not? I don't think so. Gemini had to last for 14 days in orbit. Hold on, calculator out. So 14 days times 24 times 3600 times, it said 2.09. So as far as units of electric charge, we'd need 2.5 million uh, if we didn't have a fuel cell or or solar panels. Hmm. This is another experiment. Uh, we uh, we obviously need better antennae. That would do the trick up uh, very definitely. I don't know if it's supposed to be in this slot, but I'll take it. Yeah, I think after our recent lack of communication at Mars the obvious thing to do is to get a better antenna but that might not be done in time for our actual mission so we're gonna have to use those little antennae have two of them uh, to boost the signal and hopefully we can just have extra electric charge on board to satisfy it we could put a fuel cell on. These we, we, we do get fuel cells. What we don't have is cryo tanks. <laughs> uh, so we don't have a way to store the liquid hydrogen right now. We do have the extendable solar panels. Those are nice. Yeah, um, we would need early Hydrolox engines. This should give us cryogenic tanks, hopefully. If it doesn't, we're in big trouble. Uh, I know service module tanks, obviously. That's another possibility, but they're heavy. So yeah, let's go for early Hydrolox engines and staged combustion. We've got early, no, uh, I think we unlock staged combustion. Yeah, it's already being researched. Okay. Improved staged combustion. No, that's, that's a bit ahead of us. All right, I'll get basic solids. These mature solids don't seem very mature to me. Okay, I'll save the rest for later. Taking a look at our upgrade point situation, we've got three points to distribute, but let me see what we really need. Uh, probably, probably um, speed up the technology more. So I'll put one in the VAB and the rest in technology. Okay, so let me create a new Mars rocket to aim for that window. Okay, so here are the changes I've made and actually we should call this the Navigator 4 
and the Tiger 2. Same base stage, exactly, but with some other changes. Um, I've reduced the amount of fuel in the probe itself, and so it doesn't have quite as long a burn time. And that means that we get a little bit more delta V out of the asterisk stage. I've added another set of solar panels. Hopefully that'll be enough to run the extra antenna. Um, taking a look, we don't really have much choice. It is our longest range antenna right now. We won't unlock the other antenna until it's too late. So we have to rely on this one. And so we'll use two. Again, it says uh, effective range 340. Uh, gigameters, million kilometers, uh, suitable for missions to Venus, that worked, and with some care, Mars. Well, care was not really there. Um, so uh, we're going to have to hope that two of them will boost the signal. Um, yeah, uh, it does have that purchase issue that I had pointed out in a previous episode. It says uh, 4.2 per minute. And so we expect that per second that's 0.07. And so two of them is 0.14. Uh, each of these panels. So we've added another set of panels. So what we're hoping is that that set of panels gives us 0.07 or 70 watts. I think it is. Um, this. Uh, Oh, okay, this one, yeah. And it says 156 watts. So we needed 70 watts more to run the extra antenna. And we have 156, but 70 watts would be the Earth amount. We needed 140 watts more around Mars, and it looks like we'll have that. So, um, and actually we've got two of them. So actually we've got 300 watts more, 312 watts more. So it should work. It should work as long as we keep this stage. That's the thing. Um, we would be dumping... Actually, uh, what we really should do is really not have much fuel in the top bit at all. I, I used uh, reducing utilization as a way of dumping the fuel, but um, if we end up dumping this stage, we won't have the power to run the two antennae. So, yeah, um, but... Without dumping the stage, we'll have to carry the Able Avionics package with us. Able Avionics package only takes 150 watts, so the extra solar panel should make up for that. Yeah, we really want to carry this with us, is the plot here. So we'll go like that, and then I've uh, shortened up the Agena stage. We added the Agena engine. Now the Agena engine is handy now because We've got 15 ignitions. We've got a new version and 291 vacuum ISP. So that's nice. But we're only getting 1,600 meters per second for it. Really all it's going to do is it's going to make orbit and then it's going to burn, uh, start a burn for Mars. Uh, the Astros engine will finish a burn for Mars because of course it, it isn't carrying this Thor avionics unit and also it has infinite ignitions, which is even better. Uh, now, the main difference between the Tiger 1 and the Tiger 2 is that we have replaced the RD0110 with an NK9V. And if we take a look at the relative stats of that, the RD0110 uh, kerosene burning engine that has 326 vacuum ISP and 298 kilonewtons of thrust for 400. Uh, the NK9V costs 500 uh, but has 150 extra kilonewtons of thrust and 345 vacuum ISP, so there's no good reason to ever use the RD0110 ever again. <laughs> so that's basically the size of it. Uh, of course, the NK9V is a little bit heavier, but it makes up for that in thrust anyway. So that is the, that is the situation. And so mainly our journey to orbit will be completed, and we only need to like finish it off with the Gina stage. It'll be pretty much done with by the time we get through the NK9V stage. Uh, the base stage is still the same. The base stage is still the four LR89s. And I, I don't think, do we have a upgraded version of that? Uh, no, we have the top version of that. So, but with the, with the NK9V being a larger stage, I mean, it's just physically larger, uh, the top, thrust weight ratio is 5.82 after 
the first engine cuts out, so I don't know if I'm going to shut any engines down. Uh, it's possible that we'll just let all four engines run through. Okay, so let me uh, seal this up, and then we'll we'll build one and see how it works. After seeing the Delta V figures with the fairings on, I decided to increase the length of both the second stage and the genus stage just a little bit. You might wonder why I even bothered having the genus stage when it contributes so little Delta V, uh, but it's because I really don't want to have residual fuel in the second stage, which can't restart. It would be better to have the residual fuel the, to start our transfer to Mars on the Agena stage. That would be more helpful. So that's why we have that stage. And that'll be helpful for future missions. So I won't modify the Tiger too much. We might just lengthen the Agena stage in order to uh, make the future transfers that we need. So uh, it could probably, for instance, it could actually serve, with 15 ignitions, it could serve as a service module engine for uh, uh, some other payloads, probably not a crude payload, but uh, yeah, it could be a very helpful stage, for instance, for geostationary transfers and stuff like that. So that's what I'm thinking. And speaking of which, we should uh, definitely remember that we have a mission to do like that, achieve geostationary orbit in 976 days. But I think the Earth to Mars window is more pressing. We can see it'll take 126 days to build this rocket, and that window's at 159. So this takes priority first. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we've got 19 hours to Earth to Mars window. Let's target the moon for reference. Again, not super critical, depending on where we are with respect to Mars. Uh, well, uh, 59 degree difference is a little bit harsh, so let's correct that. Let's time warp. Looks like a nighttime launch. Okay. So Tiger 2 with a Navigator 4 satellite, throttle is up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Alright, up we go. And over to Smart ASS. Okay, everything is looking good. Okay, getting ready for separation. Separation. Ignition. That didn't sound right at all. And it's not working right either. Um, we have general staging issues. I can't decouple the fairings, for instance. Okay, and we gotta try and shut down the engine. We can't shut down the engine. Don't panic, I understand it's probably just bug for me, because I've seen it work elsewhere. It's probably just for me. Which figures, because uh, I can't possibly be allowed to use a nice engine like this. This is too nice an engine for me to use. Yep. Well, it says it's shut down, but the audio does not seem to understand this, nor does the UI. Yeah. There's something very horrible about this engine. It's obviously this engine because we've used the stage before with the RD0110. Okay, well, um, that Mars mission was a mess. It is a shame, but we can't make that window. Let's get the next window in. Uh, 42 days? How does that work? Wait, um, we just had a window. How can it be another window in 42 days? Okay. Mm Maybe if we rush build, we could do something with that. We'd have to really rush. Why is there another window in 42 days? I think they just want me to waste my credits. But then again, I've got quite a lot of funds there. Uh, we can buy some upgrade points too and speed things up. Let's get some upgrade points. Let's get it up to two build points per sec. Per second? Yeah, per second. Okay, two build points per second. Let's see about building uh, another one without the NK9V. Though, I don't see how that's going to really be great for us. 
Alright, so what I decided to do is to return to the RD0110 in the second stage, but replace the Gina engine in the third stage with the with this engine. Uh, actually, it's the 11D33 version of it, uh, not yet the RD58, but that has five ignitions. It has relatively the same thrust, but much better ISP. Um, it is heavier, I think. Not by much. Yeah, so it's it's comparable to the Agena engine. And, uh, well, and of course with better ISP. So that should be good. That lightens that load for the second stage. So we get a little bit more delta V out of the whole situation. And maybe this will work out. It takes 87 days to build it. And let me just make sure the fairings go in the right place. Yeah, and so we'll have to rush the job because 87 days is too long. Okay, let's hope this will work out for us. Ah, I shouldn't have saved... Well, if the other engine isn't working, I guess I might as well save it as the Navigator 4 Tiger 2. Um, I'll have to figure out why the... I, I've had this problem with the Bobcat Soviet engines before, where some of them decide not to de uh, not to allow for the they tend to hang on to the previous stage it is a peculiarity of that particular mod pack that I've had that problem and I've had it since like 0.24 or something like that it's just some some engine variants seem to not like the letting go of the previous stage and I don't know why so this is not the first time I've seen it I don't think it happens to a lot of other people it's just a thing I have to deal with, so I'll, I'll take a look at that and run some tests. Anyway, let's build one of these. Okay, and we're going to clear the launch pad, and then I want to rush this job. Rush build. Rush. Rush even more. More, 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 more. Okay, that should do the trick. 37 days, that'll give us enough time to put it out on the launch pad. Uh, in time for the launch. Okay, 854,000. I mean, really, I should have just spent all the, those funds on upgrade points and it probably would have done better and have a longer lasting effect. Not the best credit management I've got here, but let's see. Let's see. I'm still disappointed by the previous launch. All right, Thrall is up. SAS is on. Let's try and line up just in case. Mm, a little bit far, but 1.7 degrees is fine. Okay, throw back up. SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Staging appears to be a little bit wrong here. There we go. Okay, everything is nominal so far. Hey, 30 more seconds on the first stage. The second stage is lighter because it's the RD0110, which has less thrust and uh, a limited burn time. So we'll be going a lot faster when we separate. And we ended up a lot higher than I wanted. Sep. Sep. And ignition. And ignition is good. Let's dump the fairings. Alright, everything is fine here. Let's try and not pitch up so much then. Definitely overdoing the pitch there. Okay. Very good. Let's extend the ventral antenna. By the way, I did put extra instruments on this one. So we do have a thermometer and also a micrometeorite detector. Just in case we have an opportunity to use them. Going to lock the fuels up here for now. Alright. Separation. And ignition. First ever ignition of this type of engine in this series. And 
we will have to try and reignite it. Uh, reignition is not mission critical. It just would be really good because then we wouldn't waste extra Delta V. Um, uh, we would be leaving about a thousand meters per second on the table, but actually the Astra stage has enough to make the transfer to Mars. Assuming that this Mars transfer window is legit. Okay, getting ready to make orbit here. And that's quite sufficient. 333 by 192. Hopefully the 192 side is the side we're going to be burning from, but we'll have to see. Let me try and plot it out. As I predicted, 1,062 left in this stage. And then if we unlock the next stage, we see 4,920 uh, without even using the probe zone fuel. So we definitely have the Delta V. The question is electric charge and communication, of course. Uh, let us not waste any time on that. Let me activate the antennae and target the Earth. Right now, we're not getting any sunlight, though. Okay. So hopefully, uh, it is additive, so it should boost the signal to have two of them. Uh, is it going to be enough? I don't know. We will see. Alright, so let me make the plot. Okay, I couldn't quite figure out what kind of a uh, transfer uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock was expecting. And it's sort of a weird sort of situation because we've got uh, 3,994 meters per second prograde, which is a lot more than it's normally used for Mars. And then a uh, radial thing and a normal thing. And so I used MechJab Maneuver Planner in order to plot it because I couldn't figure it out. Says any time now, 43 minutes. Hopefully we'll have communication by then. We don't have communication right now. But I guess this will work. Uh, 4,019 meters per second, it says. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it, it shows the Mars encounter. That's certainly a start. Um, what ends up happening is... This is a pretty good approach, actually. I mean, let's find out. We are burning from uh, our periapsis, basically, so that's good. Nothing went awry there. Uh, as far as communication, here we have communication. Uh, are we going to have communication through the burn? Let's see. How's this? Very stable. All right. Let's go. Alright, unlock, separation, and check the fuel, and ignition. And we continue, asterisk engine, with plenty of delta V to complete this burn, assuming it was plotted all nice and neatly, probably I'll have to make some adjustments. Uh, yeah, I don't really trust MechJub usually, but uh, in this case it got something good for us. Trying to figure out what our angle to the sun is. Oh, we're tail on, so no surprise that we're not replenishing our electric charge. Timing is a little bit off on the burn, so that would skew things as well. That one's my mistake. Okay. Well, let's see what happened. We're a little bit off. Uh, well, no encounter. Let me try. Well, we have communication now. Let me turn Smart ASS off and get SAS on because we don't need all sorts of wobble. Well, we can get some sort of encounter for 144.1 meters per second, but I feel like we'll need a mid-course adjustment because no matter how I I mess around with this. 0.1 meters per second. I don't know. It's very touchy. Well, maybe I can do something. Well, let me let me check. All right. So for 259.6 meters per second, we can get a crash course at Mars. So that's good. Uh, that's in four minutes. So a little bit of finagling with. Uh, I had put too much prograde and needed to put more radial vector into it and that fixed it. So let's turn. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, is... Feel settled? Feel settled. Okay. Wait, it said it was settled. Cheater. You can see we don't even have an encounter with Mars right now. It's all down to the last few meters per second, I guess. Or this was totally wrong. Uh, oh, well, okay, it's there. Let me see how close we can get it. Crash course. Crash course. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's reorient with respect to the sun, and then we'll take it in the next episode. We'll see how this works out. One more time for Mars. That should do the trick. And how about the situation around Mars after that turn? Yeah, it, it uh, caused some unwelcome oscillation, all right. Woo. Uh, okay, turn off the RCS. Or, is it turning? It's it's turning, yeah. Okay, caps lock the RCS. All right, so we're on our way to Mars, and we'll see what happens next time. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.